All right. Yay, we did it. Technology is a wonderful thing. Welcome to Advisory in Real Life with the real life advisor in the flesh, Tanya Hackman Hiltz. And what a what an Thank advisor you. is she? It's a Thank thrill you. to have you here, Tanya. You're the best. You're not just an advisor, you're everything. You're like all these award winning, all kinds of cool stuff. Well, Thank you. But you know what? It's it's only because of the people I surround myself with. And I always believe that you need to surround yourself and learn from people that are smarter than you. And you are one of those people that I definitely feel are much smarter than me um, and that I need to surround myself with. And, and eventually it'll... It, it, it'll rub off. It'll rub off. So we all rub off me. on each other, Tanya. Absolutely. We can go on and on and back and forth. But just list some of the things that are on this slide that I'm showing. And also... The pro advisor recognition you got. I always say it wrong. Tell me what the award was. And I remember you up on stage and it was the coolest moment ever. Um, so the, so this, so the firm of the future one, I'm thinking then, right? The 2018 um, and final global firm of the future um, for That's Intuit. What, okay. I thought it was global best advisor ever, which is basically what that is. But. Well, <laughs> yes, that was the global <laughs> firm of the future. And then there's the pro advisor ones that I have been um, for the past five years um, consecutive. Um, I've been top 100 pro advisors and 2020, I was top Canadian pro advisor. So you're just all around everything fabulous and wonderful. But your but your main thing, what's your main thing that you do these days? What's your main focus? Um I'm refocusing on the there's a lot. I've got so much going on. So I'm trying to I'm trying to get to put my main focus on working with accounting professionals more full time um, through the boot camp, through, you know, other things and working more with the apps, something that I can believe in and that I can make a difference in. I've just given up. I, I used to be a, up until I guess today, a futurepreneur Canada mentor, in which case I worked with small businesses, um, volunteer mentor through there. But I realized wow. Um, after going to Scaling New Heights, I think the one thing that I walked away with Scaling New Heights is if it causes me grief, don't do it. And if it causes me pleasure, do it. So I'm rebalancing everything. And I don't get as much pleasure of working with just general businesses as I do with the accounting. It's like I niche in the accounting industry. So I'm actually given that up so that I can put more time into doing more free webinars and, you know, getting out there. You know, again, if I work with some of the apps, very particular who I'll work with, but yeah. maybe they'll listen to, to me because I will tell them, I'm not going to tell them what they want to hear unless it's what we want. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make the best change that I can in our industry. So there's it in a nutshell. <laughs> a lot. So there what is, is your lot. boot camp all about? What's it focused on and what made you start that? And when did you start that, Tanya? I don't remember how long you've been doing that. I know it's a long time, but when did you start? Yeah, I actually started that in 2015 and it was my very first conference that I went to. We, um, I, I sat down and of course it was lots of good things happen over wine. So it was many glasses <laughs> of wine. And, <laughs> exactly. Many <laughs> glasses of wine. And I just assumed that everybody thought the same way that I did. I really hadn't gotten out into working with a lot of people in the industry. I mean, 2015, you know, we were just starting to, you know, to get into the cloud in Canada. And, you know, there was still a lot of like, I'd been working with, with, a few people locally for quite some time, but that was the first time really getting in and meeting more people kind of on a national um, basis or a larger scale. And that's when I realized everybody doesn't think the same way that I do. I'm like, I don't understand why you don't think this. So in, in talking to one of the people, she's like, Tanya, I need to be a fly in the wall in your office. And we just started talking back and forth about everything and, you know, asking questions and then saying, you know what, you should just, you know, do a training program on all of this other stuff, again, the business. So I know we don't teach people how to bookkeep or how to you know, do accounting. I expect right. you to know that. It's the business aspects around the practice it. Practice management. The practice management. Again, we've got 12 topics. It's it's so it's yeah. it's a business, like business class for bookkeepers or accounting professionals, essentially. We touch a little bit on advisory, certainly not to the point that you do. Yours is all on that. We have one week that's a little bit on that and how they can, you know, how they can do it. And then your course would be like the next level up when they're done with me and they're ready for that. So they're ready to graduate and move on to, to let's take the next, um, you know, the next 
course, the next bull by the horn. So yeah, anyway, we, we were talking and at three o'clock in the morning, it hit me and I sent, it was um, Lisa Channel and I sent her a note on Facebook. I said, let's do it and let's call it a bookkeeper's bootcamp. And by the way, bookkeeper's bootcamp is spelt wrong on that card. Bookkeepers. Bookkeepers. <laughs> you like know what? It. That's redneck we, for bookkeepers. We were, I was going to say, we work with numbers, not letters. That's, that's my, that's my, my response. But yeah, so, so, so Lisa and I, and then we picked two others. So I essentially worked with three bookkeepers for a year to understand what their pain points were about the business and, you know, why there was such a difference between my thinking from my background and the thinking of people that actually intend to get into bookkeeping and accounting. They don't think of it like it's not client relations. They're, they're working with numbers. My background is um, compliance, um, liabilities, and working with clients. So I spent a year and we built it and it's huge. We've got um, over 80 graduates. We've specifically worked small. We've only taken on so many a year and we are actually working thanks to my business coach, Richard Roper Roberts. Um, quick shout out to him. Hi, Richard. Hopefully you're watching. I actually am launching like a DIY um, portion of it to be able to help more people, you know, at, at a more affordable cost to be able to, yeah. So that's, that's a boot campus. So and then DIY, it's a network community as well too. So DIY, do it yourself. I have that level of training for my materials. It's an online course. You take it without having to be in my time zone or whatever, and you do it when you want to. And it's a great way to get in front of more people to reach it and make it more affordable so that more people can have access to tools. I it, know that's a big motivator for you. It is. And I've, I've been trying to figure out for years, for years, people have said to me, how can you do this? How can you do this? And I didn't think it could be done. But part of, of me deciding to do this is you have proven with this course that it can be done. Um, so we're just trying to, again, work out how can it be done to be successful? Cause my concern always was, I don't want anybody to come in and pay a penny regardless of what they did and to turn around and say, it didn't help. And I know some people, it's all about what you put into it. So I've been trying to That's work nice. and find that, that, that magic formula essentially. And I don't know if we found it, but I'm going to work with some people and we're going to do some betas and it'll be launched this fall. So we'll see. It's going to be wonderful. And there are oh, a ton of you. platforms. There is a lot of evolution that's happened in the learning management solution space. So it's yes. a lot easier than it used to be. Um, yeah. I didn't put the training that I teach and coach around online myself. I worked with Edie Osborne, the creator of the materials, as you know, Tanya, yeah. but took her course that I took live a long time ago in 04. I think it was the first time I took the class and now use with clients in Napa Valley wineries. I didn't yeah. do a great job of introducing myself. I'm Jeannie Whitehouse. I'm a CPA. I have multiple businesses. Also, the Impactful Advisor is the company where I do the coaching and advisory training for accountants who want to get into advisory. And Tanya, we met at a QuickBooks Connect. Uh, you think you remember the year better than I do. The year you won that award. It was No, yeah. we actually met. You made a big impact on me two years prior Before? to that. Before that. So I thought that was the same was, year. See, I've blended no, them all together. It was, it was my very first conference. It was the year that you were up on stage as being one of the top 10 women in accounting. But before then, I was standing out at the Fairmont and just all by myself because I really didn't know anybody. Because again, that was, you know, so that would have been 2016. That was early. Just, in yeah. Yeah. So 2016, still just getting into the community. And yeah. you just walked up, saw me standing there and stopped and started talking to me. And, uh, you know, we were on our way to an into a VIP event. And again, I think at that event, again, you went out of your way to come up and talk to me, made me feel really comfortable, which is absolutely amazing. And I thought the world of you, I'm like, oh, that is so nice. And then I see you up there on stage. And I was like, oh, like, <laughs> you know, trying to comprehend because I'm like, wow, like you're way up here. And, but you are just this down to earth person. And again, it was short conversations, but on the day after, and I think you were leaving early that day. You were eating breakfast by yourself. I went in by myself. You said, oh, yes, no, have a seat. And we did. And we sat and we chatted. And it was just, you left me with such an amazing, amazing feeling about you as a person and everything. So that was our, and again, I don't know if you really remember all of that because it was, you know, crazy year, but that was the first. And then it was two years later 
the the firm that we sat down at the yeah at the um at the Fairmont Hotel yeah with with Kelly and there was on that interview and yeah all of that yep yep um and I the the best part of those conferences for me is sitting down at the meals and meeting people that I don't know and I really spend a lot of time because I want to ask what's going on with you I want to learn about what people care about so that when I speak or even if I've already spoken that I can make sure I'm relevant to whatever people are doing. And I love what people are doing and I love learning about it. I love talking to people like you and I I know, and it's, that's how we make connections. And that's what I've missed this year. I haven't been speaking as much just because of the way the scheduling has worked. Um, And I haven't had that opportunity to get out there and see what people are doing and hear how they're getting up to date and all those things. I have though had the opportunity to coach a bunch of people through the training, which is how I'm staying connected this year. And, and, you know, that really is rejuvenating for me to have these people coming through. And, and Tanya was brave enough to go through the first launch that I did of coaching around the online training. So the program Tanya signed up for with Sherry Lee Mathers, the two of them were my first two students. And I really didn't know if I could add any value to the materials, because they're fabulous. They're online, they're videos. It's Edie Osborne, my mentor, my friend, to me, the smartest person on the planet. And you download a bunch of tools and you watch these videos and you basically have everything you need to be an advisor. So I did this cohort kind of like, well, nobody really needs what I'm going to do because she's already given it to them. And they came in and I kept going, is this helping? And and Tanya, you were very supportive. Um, and said that it did add value. And so that really enabled me to go forward and do more of it. But it really is fun for me. Um, and hopefully there's a lot of value in what you get out of the classes. There absolutely is. And I think the value you add, I mean, like David and like and Tanya and Heather, all three of them called me before they signed up with you. And they knew because I've spoken about you in the course and they knew it was great. Um, because again, I'm like in boot camp, there's certain things like that, you know what, I'll kind of talk about, but I'm like, I can't share that. I can't, whatever. That is genius yeah. course. You know, you need to go through here um, yeah. because of, because of, of, you know, the, the, the rights licensing. and all that and the licensing and everything. Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. and so they called me up and they were debating back and forth with the cost. They were like the DIY. And I'm like, you know what? No, if I had done the DIY, first off, I still would be struggling and not finished it. Um, so so it's part of the accountability. But sometimes the way you explain things is different than Edie. And you, when you bring your own personality into it, it was, I mean, it was a no-brainer to me. Sherry Lee called me up and I didn't even know really what it was about. She said, there's this course from Jeannie. And I just, I was sold a Jeannie. I'm like, okay, I'll work with Jeannie. Okay. <laughs> just crazy. And but Tanya, you, you you're, no, so you're no stranger to training. Um, I mean, you've taken everything. You've done the Black Swan program with Ron Baker. What else have you, I mean, you've done everything. And I thought, what else is she going to learn from me? There's nothing left for you to know or learn. And well, it was just, um, and there is in there. like there, there mm-hmm. is, I mean, I've worked with, again, Ron was the, Ron Baker was the first person that, that I worked with, which absolutely yeah. amazing person yeah. to work with. Brilliant. He Most was, brilliant person on the planet. Absolutely. And he was life changing, but he took me so far. Then I worked with Rondalyn Korlick uh, on, you know, again, she's done do pricing value because she looks at things a little bit differently. So I'm like, okay, again, there was a lot of overlap between her and Ron, but it was a different way to be able to look at things and I love different perspectives so I we worked with I worked with her for a year and then to you and still working with you and I'm now working with Richard Roper Roberts more on the marketing and you know to infiltrate like more again on the influencer side of things and just kind of going where my passion is on that but I think everybody needs to constantly learn and there are things that I mean like you Jeannie you love talking to people to hear what's relevant you know again I know you've talked to a ton of people to find out what's relevant and you've figured it out so again I can either go and do the same thing as you or I can come and learn from you and not have to recreate the wheel. And, you know, that's what, that's what, especially us women do. We're out here to support each other, to learn, to grow, to to applaud when others succeed and to take what we have because, you know, none of us have a new idea. We just have a different way of presenting it. And as you said, sometimes a different way of presenting it connects in a way that somebody else's way doesn't work. So the more we can learn from other sources, the more, I think, the more we're able to learn. But before- Before we go any further, we have to address this debate. It is the Basset Hound versus Beagle great debate of 2022. (laughs) My brand is a Basset Hound. I think they rock. Yours is a Beagle. It's a Basset Hound 
wannabe, in my opinion, <laughs> with longer legs and shorter ears. So tell me your beagle story. I know. And you gave them away, the stuffed animals. I just gave away Basset Hound socks all for many years. Oh, that's not the cute. stuffed animals. So well, um, so tell me your beagle story. So what that is, so of course, anybody that, that knows me or has been on any of my webinars probably is uh, knows that Rosie, my beagle, my real life beagle, this is not Rosie, this is a Rosie puppy, um, but knows that Rosie is is more internet famous than, than I am. And I started realizing that when I would show up and she always used to snore in the background. And then all of a sudden people would say, well, she's not snoring. I hope she was okay. Or if there was a little bit of snoring, somebody would say, what's that? Like, is somebody sleeping or, you know, internet issues? And all of a sudden a whole bunch of people oh and she here's her name here she is oh, she's coming in to say hi Rosie, yeah, there, she, Rosie, there she is there she's kicking around the corner <laughs> um, <so> <laughs> excuse me but they would you know they would say oh don't worry about it that's just Rosie so yeah. I started to realize she was much more inter internet famous than I was and there's a very good possibility that more people come to the webinars just to see her wow. trying to get a chance for that sighting rather than yeah. just see me <laughs> so in boot camp, I'm like, okay, let's try and have a mascot. And everybody knows Rosie. So we had decided a couple of years ago to have Rosie as an actual mascot. And then COVID hit and things got crazy. Yeah. So we thought we'd launch her as a mascot. And what a better way to do that than try to gamify um, some basically social media packages that we're going to be doing around conferences. And so we're now moving our business into a whole other avenue of it and it was started by something Sherry Lee Mather said as well too which is just really funny she just triggered something and all of a sudden I'm like oh let's do this so I was working with Richard and I thought wouldn't it be cute to give away these little beagles again the mascots and the branding and all of this mm -hmm. stuff and he said to me he says you know what Tanya he says why don't you take some of that he says sell the beagles for you know a hundred dollars my cost is $50. It's it's about $20 for all of them, including everything. Then we've got shipping, um, conversion, and um, yeah. And then of course, the time for the social media involved, because we weren't just doing those. So people were sponsoring these. So an app was actually sponsoring them. So let's say you decided for a conference that you want to sponsor one, it will have a little card here with your logo, all of your tags, and encourage people to do some social media with that. And then of course, we promise so much social media around the Beagles as well. Oh, and it's funny, because Richard said, now let's take some of that. He says, Tanya, take $20 and put that to a local humane, so no, no kill humane society because he knows I love animals. And I said, you know what, let's go one step further. I've actually been involved with Beagle Freedom Project for over a decade, ever since I was aware of their, just over a decade, ever since I was aware of their existence, thanks to Google, you know, our new big brother <laughs> hears that I have a beagle and starts bringing all these beagle things. And so we oh, actually cool. donate $50 of that. So um, by the That's time you fantastic. take everything out, I'm not making any money off of these. It's just enough to pay the team to do the social media portion. And so we're actually partnered with Beagle Freedom Project. They reached out to cool. them and they are actually, they're retweeting and they're doing all of this. And what they are for people who don't know about them is they actually, and they don't just work with beagles. They actually rescue all animals from multiple situations. Unfortunately, 80% roughly of what they rescue are beagles. Um, mm. So they mostly focus on mm. laboratories that are using beagles for testing. So um, really? they, yes, wow. beagles are they are small enough to fit in the cages because they're not much bigger than cats. They're like oversized cats. So they're yeah. small enough to sit in the cages. They just want to love and their personality is so forgiving and they're so docile that they have unfortunately the perfect personality and they're the perfect size to be tested on. And so what happens is in a lot of these, um, it's the states. It's Canada, I do believe, has made it um, illegal in Canada. But there are still some states that, and still, you've probably all heard about anybody's watching, I think it's the Invicto um, Beagles that they just released. I think it's 4,000 beagles because this testing facility got shut down. And oh so 4,000 beagles have been released and they're looking for homes for these. So Beagle Freedom Project is working with many other ones to try to find homes. But what happens is these... In, in some of the states, they are it is now law that they are not allowed to euthanize. And so what they do is they contact Beagle Freedom Project. Beagle Freedom Project has volunteers that will come pick them up, take them, give them, you know, medical treatment and um, 
foster mm. them until they don't have as much PTSD. Because there's a lot of PTSD that these animals have as well, too, because they've been tested on most of their lives. Okay. And then Exactly. And then once yeah. they're ready um, and, and they trust people enough, then they're adopted out into forever homes. And of course, the the people that are adopting them have to be aware and pass certain screening because you are now dealing with a high needs dog who may as well, they may have been given cancer. So there are some of them. Oh it God. broke my heart when I saw the first testing That's because awful. they tested, they had some of them that they were texting oxycodone on to find out how addictive it is and at what point you die. There's some of these beagles that have spent their whole life with a mask on to find just breathing in secondhand smoke to find out how um, oh, how damaging secondhand smoke is. So there's a lot of unnecessary testing. Yuck. And so what oh. happens is in those places that this testing is um, it, that it's that it is still legal for them to euthanize the animals after they are highly encouraged to again don't euthanize them let's give them a second chance at life and beagle freedom projects picks it up and because of them and there's a few celebrities that work with them ian summerhalder who is on vampire diaries he was damon salvatore and his wife nikki reed who is most well known for rosalie and twilight they actually do a lot of work with this in the weekend that I actually was lucky enough to meet um, Ian Summerhalder. Nikki was not with him. She was actually in Washington um, and they had just that weekend passed, I want to say, I think it was for Virginia, the Beagle, Beagle Freedom Bill, which now made it illegal to euthanize when they were done with the testing so that, again, wow. it gives them a forever life. One thing that they just did recently too is they take the money that's donated and they went to China and they just bought two dog trucks. So again, all breeds of dogs, stopped them, didn't let them go to the dog meat factory, bought them, shipped them all back to Canada or sorry, to the United States and has adopted them out. And the last thing yeah. I'm going to say on that is one of the most famous beagles in the world, a lot of people don't know, was actually rescued, not from that situation, was a stray that was found, did not find the home, and adopted out and went through Beagle Freedom Project to be adopted out to the forever home. And that is Meghan Markle's beagle, who... Of course, <laughs> everybody knows Meghan Markle and probably saw the cute little beagle riding with the Queen of England <laughs> to their wedding. And that <laughs> beagle was one of the beagles, again, who had been, you know, adopted out through Beagle, beagle Freedom Project. So it's very passionate to me as a beagle mom. And then when I told Richard about that, he just started crying. He's like, Tanya, we have to do this. And it's that funny, when fantastic. we were talking to the apps, the apps were like, oh, no, no, people aren't going to do that. So they bought a couple of different of the media packages. And they said, I'm going to throw in a beagle for free. And we're going to take part of this and put it over there. And so essentially, we did end up from Scaling New Heights with $1,155 US dollars donated wow. to Beagle Freedom. Um, I, when I when I put it out there, I showed the picture of it. And, um, and yeah, that was just from a really small one. So every Beagle given out with the sponsor there, again, I gave some of them out for free, just to be able to build this. And we plan on doing this again for CP, um, CP um, Ignite in Calgary, Canada in September and QB Connect in Vegas. So again, ton of beagles. So if anybody interested is out there, again, it'll be $100. If it's in the US, it's US funds. If it's in Canada, Canadian funds. But we will be having a ton of these and we've already got so many requests. I think I'm going to have to have them shipped directly to the hotel shipped waiting for it. me <laughs> and not bring them with me. Get but, somebody to help you handle the beagle shipments. Exactly. Wow. And then on the social media side, whoever adopts them, and we had people hunting us down looking for these beagle to adopt them. So again, let's say they've got one of yours. We're encouraging them. And the instructions on here is, okay, so now, you know, take a tweet and thank, you know, the impactful advisor for, for the puppy and what's the puppy's name. And so we've got one of the puppies has now gone to London and we saw it's like travels back That's to right. London. And it's really interesting to see these social media stories built around these little puppies. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it took off like wildfire and um, yeah, so excited about that. So thank so, you for asking about that. So, so I think you won the debate. I think <laughs> what you're doing on the Beagle side is way better. I mean, I have one behind me. That's my last one I had in 2018. So first of all, I don't have the current live Basset Hound, but I have it as part of my brand because we raised Basset Hounds when I was growing up. We had two females and we had multiple litters and we had puppies and and then I've had two females most of my life. My ch children grew up with basset hounds. We, and then we had my last female um, who passed away in 2018. So I haven't had another basset hound, but they're part of my brand. And for me, it's an identification with my roots as a Southerner. They're um, a very Southern dog. And they're also 
just like what you said about beagles, they're just love yeah. buckets. They can't do much. They're just long, slow, and tired. And so, um, but they're love. They're to me, yeah. they represent me when I'm in my authentic self. And that's what I use that to represent. When I put them on slides, it breaks down the barrier to learning for audiences because they always go ah. You see the same thing with beagles. Um, and I've only ever had one beagle. So you wow. win the beagle debate on that. I've only had one. I, I but I've it just <laughs> I've had a bunch and they're to me they're, and I see them on the street and it's like I get a, a message that I'm on the right track every time I see one because in California where I currently live I'm in Napa Valley I work with wineries out here I didn't mention that either and I'm originally from Greenville South Carolina when you see a basset hound in California it's very unusual when you see a basset hound in Greenville South Carolina it's not that unusual right so, right so to me it's a sign that okay you're doing the right thing or you're on the right track or it's going to be a good day or something like that but for me it's a yeah. reminder to be who I am and not try to be somebody that I'm not. Um, right. And, so and I, and I, I think the one reason why I really connected so much with Beagle Freedom Project too, is that I have always been, again, I've only had one Beagle, but to my roots and my core, I will always give time and money and resources and anything without question to children, anything relating to children and animals. And animals. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I think there are a lot of people in that same boat. I think we're drawn to, I don't know, people that need something that needs help. Well, if they, they can't, can't yeah, they can't help themselves. If they can't That's help right. themselves, let's us. help with that. And it just happened to be That's again. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what drew us to accounting, Tanya. Yes, you're right. You're right. People who can't help themselves, who don't understand the numbers. And I think much of what we do, and it's one of the reasons that we connect on so many levels, um, we're there to help. And one of the problems that we have as a profession is that we think we have to be the experts. And that's the other thing these bassets and the beagle both represent to me on this slide is our job is not to be the expert. Our job instead is to ask different questions of those clients that we work with. So talk more about that and um, and how that relates to the training that you took. Yeah, and absolutely. And I completely agree with that. It's asking the different questions. And that's, that's what was always about everything that I did. But I didn't really know those questions to ask because I always looked, okay, let's ask backwards. What's the yeah. answer that you want to get? Or, you know, what's and, the and end kind in of mind? Work, exactly. The end in mind. And yeah. let's work backwards. So that was in my mind, but it was not structured and part of my body I'm a Pisces so part of me is very creative when I'm creative I'm all creative and when I'm structured and logical I'm all structured and logical and it's hard for me to merge those two and this is where you came in and you were able to bridge that gap between them because I wasn't um I I just that's just not we the didn't way have that my time you could have figured well, it out and time to you're right if I had it. time yeah. you know you look at these things and there's no magic there's nothing that you know we couldn't have figured out it's not calculus. Yep. But it's somebody who had the perspective. And Edie's gift, one of the big gifts about Edie is she wasn't an accountant. So she was a normal person who came in to work with our profession and brought in perspectives that we wouldn't have had normally. Yep. Which is part obvious of what Adams. Yeah. Obvious Adams. She brings in all these things from also working with clients, but also having done some work with other organizations that trained accountants. But she came at it from a different perspective. And so the way she presents things is very eye-opening to me. Um, and this is just the, the concept. It's this level five. You start at the beginning where most accountants are. And the goal is to move from this hindsight perspective into foresight. And Edie just has a way of describing things and, and ideas and packaging and, and all of those tools, Tanya, do you refer back to those tools? You better be. I, I just are. used the scope grid yesterday. Oh yeah, I did. I just and and that's <laughs> and, and it's funny. I'm not using that so much with my bookkeeping clients. I haven't. We're still trying to do so much around there. Yeah. Um, and we are going to be using it with the bookkeeping clients, but I use it more so when somebody comes in, not through boot camp. Um, maybe they've been through boot camp, maybe they haven't, but what they just want a one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, yeah. the accounting professional. So that's where I find I'm using it more because I'm just kind of and, and that's a it's a pre-launch still and we that we're doing with with, with my triple A for coaching program, exactly. And triple yeah. A is not the the American auto club either uh, <laughs> it's, it's well, advice accountability and oh answers Action, advice accountability no answers yeah. advice and accountability Fantastic. Um, is what that stands for yeah but i do plan on bringing that and having that as a part of as a formal part of 
you know, are onboarding with our clients. Okay, great. Now we've got this. And, and so that will start this fall. Um, it's already in there. Absolutely. But it, yeah, still using those tools. And Sherry Lee Mathers and I actually, we put in, um, we're doing some breakout sessions for CPB Canada. And we put in to do a workshop at um, Connect in Vegas, which is going to um, use some ideas and stuff. I think it's the chart of accounts um, analysis, the chart of accounts analysis. And I know Sherry's going to be one. reaching out to you for that one. Exactly. Yeah. But try to pull some of this tools in. And then again, so anybody that's there, you can see this stuff and we are going to be giving a shout out to Jeannie on the impactful advisor as well, too. And we'll be giving you so, a discount if you sign up from Tanya's work. So yeah, there so we go. check it out there. So that's there great. Go. Um, so that's what we want. We want these tools to spread. We want accountants to do work that they enjoy that has an impact for their clients. It's why I named this brand, theimpactfuladvisor.com, because it's, I don't want to just teach people stuff that they don't do anything with. I want them to go out and change the world through what we do as accountants. Tanya, the biggest objection I get, and I just had somebody reach out to me the other day about the program. And she said, I'm afraid that these tools are too advanced for a bookkeeper. They were designed for accountants, which really bugs me because, first of all, bookkeepers are accountants, y'all. We're doing accounting. So there's this there's this lack of confidence. But secondly, I'm not teaching you gap or nerdy oddity stuff in this. These are tools that accountants don't know either unless they get training. And this is ideally suited to bookkeepers. And Tanya, please enlighten and uh, talk about that. OK, so I think my... these are too advanced for bookkeeping. No. No, they are absolutely not. They look at, at first, they look overwhelming. And this is where I say that they need to work with you, whether it's the, you know, the DIY with the monthly session the with DIY you. Plus. Yeah, whether yeah. it's something like that, they need to somehow, um, you know, potentially work with you. Because to me, my learning style, that is what made the difference most definitely. Because these things, they looked, they were intimidating. Because I thought that, oh my gosh, you're a CPA. You teach this to accountants. Again, I thought they were intimidating. They are not when you break it down. It's like, oh, okay, that is a lot simpler than I thought it was. And as bookkeepers, again, look, the first two that you had through it are bookkeepers. Your current right. group that I know I've popped in a few times, I'd say what, half our bookkeepers as well too? Yeah, every yeah. group. The bookkeepers yeah. are doing this stuff, Tanya. We the have are the learning knowledge. it and thinking about it and waiting five years and going, I'm still thinking about it. We're, yeah, and you're right. slower to act. The, the, the CPAs. The bookkeepers are already doing this in an informal yeah. way. Random acts just, of consulting, we call yes, it. Yes, and we just don't know we're doing it in an informal way. And this, the tools and you and your course and from Edie and all of that helps us to bring it in to recognize that we are doing this, to recognize we already have the knowledge and giving us the tools to do this in a formal way that, that we now can have very clear actions that can come from it. So I just wanted to mention, as I thought about that, that I currently am offering a discount um, on all of my programs for people that want to make the rest of this year the better half of 2022 for you and your clients. And so the discount code is better half 22 and you can take 30% off the prices on my website for all the programs. And that's um, the impactful advisor.com. So you can come in now. That's going to be the last cohort of this year that I offer. The next ones will start up again in 2023. So those will be the things. Um, you can do the DIY anytime. But if you want to be in a cohort, which is me coaching you through for six months, once a week, we have an hour and a half call. And I talk about what I do with these tools in real life with my own winery clients in Napa Valley. I have the pleasure of working with a CPA firm here, Broke Markle Davison Company that lets me do the fun stuff. I don't do any tax or accounting. I do advisory and work with wineries. I work with them part-time. And then I have other stuff that I'm doing like this and speaking and all the other fun stuff. But this is absolutely created for anybody who's working with clients and numbers and who wants to help those clients achieve their business goals. And that's what motivates me to get this out there because I see the impact we can have by doing this work and our clients yeah. are desperate for this kind of help. They are. And again, I, I, I will say it and I will say this to anybody who calls. I will say it again. Anybody who asks me, if you can do the cohort, if you can somehow work with Jeannie, again, 
it, it to me that was the difference it was not just the accountability and I know there was lots of weeks showed up that like I didn't have the homework done but <laughs> it's enough. seeing it wasn't as much the accountability so I still there's some tools I still haven't worked with it's still all there but it was again seeing you implement how you do that again pull together because watching Edie's videos I didn't quite connect them I did but I didn't and it was all it was that light bulb moment when you explained it in that different way from that different perspective so having both perspectives was so 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 valuable so that's yes. fantastic. Um, yeah. And I, I was so, it was so fun to do that for six months. And I've had, um, I think I've put 60 people through the training since I started. I launched the Impactful Advisor in the middle of COVID. And so that includes the do-it-yourself and the other, but we've had a lot of cohorts come through. I've had um, groups of people from individual accounting firms and I create a custom program for them and a different pricing because I also want to help those firms market both internally and externally. And I know that a firm typically puts a small group of people in and then those people become isolated and it doesn't spread through the firm. And so I've been facing that. I mean, I've been working with firms since again, early 2000 on this kind of stuff and been in a firm myself um, and still am and getting it to spread and getting the firm to think differently. And all of that is, is the tough part. Once you get the concepts and you get a few people through the training, then you've got to give them capacity to do the work and support them through marketing and everything else. So I have these specialized groups where I put through just members of a single firm. I have one going on right now. Um, and so what I want people to know is I don't want price to be the, uh, the problem. If you want to do this and you really want to commit, then I will work with you on all kinds of things to get you in here. I don't want you to not be here because I made it too expensive. I do need to make a living, but I can expand the payment options and I can work with you to do something that'll work for you. But you have to trust yourself enough to make the commitment. And I want you to have some skin in the game to do this. Otherwise, you're not going to show up and you're not going to do the work. Absolutely. So and part of what I'm doing. Go and ahead. Just to add to there, what hit me while you were talking is Edie did what I did on boot camp. Same thing. She just did it before I did it. You know, she's working with people again. Doesn't everybody think this way? Well, yeah. accountants obviously don't think the same way that Edie did. And, and this is where, again, I yeah. had a little bit difficult of a time with that. And this is where, again, hearing from your perspective and Edie's really pulled it together. So, yeah. and you know what? It will pay for itself. Even though I have implemented maybe 10% of, of everything, I still have it. I still have the support. I'm in the tools of the month. I'm in all of this. But even though I probably only really truly implemented 10%, it has still paid for itself. It is a long term investment, but it will pay for yourself, pay for itself definitely, even with just a short. The faster you use it, the faster it pays for itself. I know. The more you yeah. sit down with clients and do this, but you're also in a transition mode in your own business, Tanya. So you've got oh, a bunch yes. of other things that you're doing. But I tell you, that scope grid, I used it on a call today. We were talking about um, how to increase pricing inside an accounting firm. And it starts with the scope grid. And it's just a little bingo card that you walk a client through what works, what doesn't work, and their ideal outcome across five areas of the business. You can create your own card. The first column is financial. The second is customers, operation, people, and end in mind. That's where scope comes from. The S is a dollar sign. So it's financial, customers, operation, people, and end in mind. And it's what works, what doesn't work or needs to be improved. And what is your ideal outcome, which is something we don't ask our clients across the full business, not just in that narrow column of the financial broken thing, which is where we jump in and start solving. So this backs you up, gives you bigger picture perspective, and also elevates your value right out of the shoot. So if you want to raise your pricing and do more for fewer clients, that one document, it's a level three tool. It's called the scope grid. If you want it, you can email me. Um, I'll send you a copy of it, or you can create your own based on those columns. I'm Jeannie at even the nerd.com. Well, and I think what this does is this really takes us and forget the advisory services thinking about this. People are th sick of hearing trusted advisory and advisory no, services. Well, we're not living well, up to what, that moniker in my opinion. Well, well, and what this does <laughs> is what we truly are when I talk to people again about the confidence, because I see Dawn put in here, you know, imposter syndrome. And we, oh, yeah. we have, I think all of us absolutely do as well. But we with do, this, then. it gives us the confidence and it lets our clients know that we are Again, not just a bookkeeper, not just an accountant. We actually are, and this is what I say to people, and, and this is where I'm like, you need to charge more, but we are business um, coaches. 
That's we right. Are we're, you, we what are you said. business consultants. We are the bookkeeper. We are the accountant. We are the IT person. We so are. you think about that. The bookkeeper generally charges the least. The accountant, not sure where the accountant would be in there with the more. IT person, but the accountant and the IT person are more and the business coach is usually the top. We um, do all of that. So when you're in this and you do all of that and you realize you do all of that, it increases our, val our, our confidence, which which makes us more comfortable, again, having these tools to talk to the clients about it, which increases our value, which should increase our price to them. But that also increases their bottom line as well, because they can be more efficient, more effective. There's so many different tools in here, like Toast, Kaizen Toast. I love that. Obvious Adams. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Well, so many things. Um, yep. But you also said earlier that you were already doing advisory, but I guarantee you, you were giving it away. I was, and, and I didn't we realize do. that. I didn't call it that. That's what we do. And this gives you a systematic way to make sure that you have built it into the services you deliver and that you can bill for it and elevate the, the bill for all the work you do because you're giving them actionable insights into what to do to improve their business results. And they yeah. will pay for that. But they you will. have to set the stage differently for them because the, the profession, and I'm talking about accounting, yeah. which to me is whatever label you put next to your name, bookkeeper, CPA, accountant, tax preparer, EA, whatever designation it is, to me, that is meaningless. We're all out there in a numbers role, undervaluing the services that we provide and not getting paid what we deserve. And yes. what this is about is really establishing yourself different from the, the price battle that everybody else is fighting on the compliance work. It takes you out of that mix and puts you in a different level where you're helping them do stuff and they're willing to pay more for that. Absolutely. People don't have a problem paying $200, $250 an hour for a business coach. Huh. When they realize that is the value that you are giving them, you are giving them that value in everything. Yeah. And you tell them, hey, and I'm not charging you $250 an hour. Maybe you are, maybe you aren't. But they're going to recognize that you are worth it. And it is an investment into their business. We're hopefully not charging by the hour. We're doing the Ron yes. Baker Ed class. And I see we have Ron Thomas here from Sage, the Ed class Sage guy who trashes timesheets every chance he I gets. Along with Ed Class, and you've been through, I mean, along with Ron Baker, and you've been through Ron's training, and there you are talking about what we and charge I don't, for the hour. It, well, because business coaches tech, charge know, by I the know, hour. I, know. I well, don't. You're right. I don't. I and, and I know Rod would, Ron would smack me on, on the <laughs> back of the head next time he saw me. He's too and, nice to do that, but he would You're be right. He it. would. You're right. You're right. He is too nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, we don't. We absolutely you know, do a form of value pricing. I call it right sizing, the right price, the yeah. right um, services Service. and the right person, right client. But we have a challenge as accountants, as members of this profession and whatever, again, a moniker you choose to describe yourself with, um, yeah. we are undervalued. We are not expected to provide actionable insights and real help to clients. And so to start doing that and start saying, I'm going to charge more and I'm going to do all this great advisory stuff is a bit of a challenge when you've taught them that what we do is do the books, don't even give you a financial statement, don't explain what's going on, but your bank account is reconciled. Yeehaw. You can't just leap over from that into this without tools, I think, like the ones that are in this toolkit. How do we start asking different questions? How do we make them feel smarter? How do we empower their teams to do things differently in alignment with the goals of that owner? So talk more about that, Tanya, some of the other things that you can do as a result of the training. Well, and, and the one thing that jumps into my mind then is the Kaizen Toast. So that has nothing to do really, it does and it doesn't with their financials. It is, you know, you can look that up there, Kaizen Toast. There is a video. Kaizen, I'm typing it in here. Kaizen Perfect. Toast video from, I think it's GMPB. Uh, it's not oh, like that. You can I can't find remember, it. but yeah, Kaizen Toast. Into the chat. I can't there's, remember. there's like a five minute video and then there is a full video that you kind of have to dig a little bit more to get, but Edie gives you the whole thing or Jeannie does in, in that from yeah, Edie. Yeah, it's and, and, PMB. It yeah, and, and what it is, it is the simplest thing. It is, are you making toast efficiently and where is the money loss maybe with time with somebody sitting there and, you know, just not doing anything, waiting for it to be done. Maybe with using, you know, too much energy going back and forth and maybe just the flow of things aren't very efficient. Maybe they're putting too much butter on and not being efficient with the butter. Yeah. It looks at it and you would think, how can there be so many better ways to make toast? 
Well, there is. And there were even more ways when we talked about it afterwards, there were yeah. more ways than I even caught to do that. But again, this is, you know, it's, it's, you have to change the thought process. And then on top of that video, there's tools in here that help us to be able to do that, to look at things differently. And again, you would think, what does that have to do with the financial, you know, financials? Well, it does at the end of the day, because everything boils down to the financials. So the, one of the core lessons in all of these materials is the questions we should ask should be, is it a people or a process issue? And all the materials in this level five training, and it starts again at level one. And this is a view of what the client sees, what our customer sees as a result of what we're delivering as their service provider. We go from this basic level of quality information to actually giving them real time, real time feedback, what if analysis, a little bit of the future look. And then finally, giving them ownership and accountability over the outcomes of that business and empowering the line workers, the people at the front lines of that company to do things differently. That's part of the Kaizen theory that you're talking about where this video is. It represents concepts from lean manufacturing. It's a funny way to, to see what you can see when you are outside of doing the work. We can watch this guy making toast and we can see a million things he's doing wrong. But when we're the guy making the toast or the gal, we're just doing this stuff because we're getting by and doing the best we can to get whatever we're trying to accomplish done. Yep. So those are the kinds of things that we bring to bear on the work we do as advisors working with clients. We have that same ability to be outside observers and to look at what they're doing with what Kaizen calls a keen eye. And that is a, a fresh view, not making assumptions, just noticing what's going on in that environment. And well, that's huge value that we can bring. It is. And that people are processed. That is actually something that I use very commonly. And I, I don't, hopefully I'm not, I'm not going to cheat too much by saying this. I'll tell you, the answer is always a process issue because if it's a people issue, did you hire the wrong person? So therefore you need to affect the processes. Do you have the wrong person in the wrong role? Therefore it's again, it's a process. So at the end of the day, when you keep digging deeper, it all boils down to processes. And this is something we can help with. And this is something that the tools help with that, that is more on the coaching side, but this so increases our values. I so showed I, my husband the, the Kaizen Toast um, video and he says, oh, he works at Kellogg's. And he says, oh, yeah, he's been there for uh, for 10 years at Kellogg's. He says yeah. they do that all the time. That is part of their regular process to do a Kaizen review. Yeah, they have. Um, there's a whole discipline around that. And so some of those concepts are in, embedded in what some of the training and that Toast video was mentioned. And I bring it in and share it with people. So I had to type in the chat. Oh, yeah. Process Canadian or process. See, I it's. Say. And we just do a soft O here in Canada yeah. instead of the hard O, not an A, but yeah. I get that all the time. And, and, and every time I do that, I might not realize I'm talking to somebody from the U.S. So all of a sudden we're like, you Canadians are just so cute. And I'm like, I how did you know I was Canadian? Because uh, the way you process. pronounce it's process, not That's process. Right. That's so funny. I know. It's even, <laughs> even worse when you got a southern and it has 12 <laughs> syllables in a word that it's not designed to have it, but... But that's just the tip of the iceberg or some of the stuff that's in here. But I just wanted to reiterate the fact that the tools are not designed for CPAs or any particular designation or level of, of deep, nerdy, FASB, gappy, anything understanding. This is an outside perspective that lets you leverage those skills at whatever level you are currently sitting in a different way. It doesn't require advanced calculus or any kind of physics or any of that stuff. Or, uh, there, and there's no quiz about any of that traditional accounting stuff. There's no debiting and crediting going on here because that isn't where the value is. It's figuring out where things are happening in the company. It's looking at the people. It's looking at the operations, the technology, the communication that goes on. We also learn in the cohort, I add a DISC assessment and DISC training, which is how to communicate with different people. It's not part of the online training. So there are things like that that I put a wrapper around this to enable you to do the things that I know I need to do with my clients. And hopefully um, you'll be doing them as well. So there's different stuff, but if that's not what you want to do, there's a way to get in there much easier. Just do it yourself, get all the tools, download the hundred tools and don't do anything else, but use a tool and you will get your money's worth. So you don't have to meet with me for all that time. You can't take that much basset hound in your life. Um, <laughs> But I want you to find something. And if not my stuff, somebody's stuff. Go to Tanya's class. Go to the Woodard training. Life Plan is giving away advisory training or selling it or something around their tool. There are components of advisory training 
much of the training, in my opinion, is on how to build the practice. This training is, what do I do with a client? This is very different. Here's what you say. Here's how you set yourself up. Here's the kind of um, board you create to do movable sticky notes. All that stuff is included in this class. This is very focused on what do I do when I sit down with a client to deliver these kinds of services? And I will say there's nothing like this out there. I don't teach this because I don't have the license to teach this. I use the tools like say in, in, in my, in my coaching, but yeah, there's, there's nothing like this. And it was absolutely like say first. And again, your first two, your first two were bookkeepers. So you're right. It is for everybody. And, and, and again, yeah, like Jeannie said, if you can only get the tools, get the tools. If you can work with Jeannie again, worth every, every penny and more. I would love to work with people. I really enjoy learning yep. what's going on and, and the individual coaching. I also try to reach out to people and talk with them individually in addition to the, the class time. But you also learn a ton from the other people in the class, which is always the benefit of being in a group. And then you have support. Um, we've had a lot of people working with each other as a result of the training where they've been together. And it, that really makes me happy. So lots of ways to do it. Just figure out what you want to do and take whatever action you need to take to move towards it. It doesn't have to be with my stuff. Figure out that if you're happy in doing what you're doing, if you are, then keep doing it. If you're not, then find a way to break the pattern of what you're doing and be happy. That's what motivates me. I want more accountants to love getting up every day and doing what they do. And I know, Tanya, you're motivated by the same thing. Yeah. Well, again, my new mantra, if it caused me grief, it's gone. If it causes me pleasure, it stays. So this just a quick, this is a, a screenshot from inside the training. It's broken down into modules by level. The levels are intended to give you a way as a learner to grasp the concepts and then build on them. They're not intended to be that I deliver level one service, then two, then three, then four, then five, and, and force my client to go through every piece. But it is a way to get it in your brain. And then you decide what fits best for whatever situation your client might be facing. These are the three levels. Um, there's do it yourself only. You just get the license. You take all the stuff, you download all the materials. The videos are not downloadable, but you can watch them. You have a year subscription when you sign up. The do it yourself plus monthly webinar is called the DIY plus option. It's a little more expensive because you get me in a live webinar once a month in a group public training class. And then the group training is a cohort where it's just us, whoever signs up for that program. I work with you every week or at the, the frequency that the group determines on a date that we determine. But I go through 24 sessions with you to cover the materials that are included in the training. We spend an hour and a half and I try to bring in other stuff based on my own experience in working with clients. Um, if you want to reach out to either one of us, there's Tanya. And Tanya, is that the right email that you want to share? Sure. Okay. okay. Yeah. You should, I would suggest the support. That's fine. Support at mycbs.ca. Just, okay. I know I'm about a week to get to any emails if it goes to support yeah. and it's yeah. for me, the girls flag it um, okay. or just, yeah. www.bookkeepersbootcamp.ca. Okay. Or Those are my, oh, find uh, me my at, at, yeah. Find me Whoop, at Tanya's bootcamp anywhere. And I have the wrong logo on the last slide. That's Ignite Spot. It was my last month's guest, uh, Dan Luthy. But um, Tanya's stuff is on the front page. I'll go back <laughs> to that so we have the right info showing up. That's me sloppy, um, <laughs> That's sloppy uh, getting things done. There you go. There's your page with your information. Reach out to Tanya, one of the brightest stars in the in the entire profession. Also one of the kindest, most willing to give things away to help and support other folks, a rock star if there ever was one. It's an honor to know you, Tanya, and to have had you in my class. What a great way for yeah. me to start um, the best in my class. So um, you're that, making me I, blush. You're making me blush. Well, I don't know if you can see how it is. It's, it's all true. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate it. And um, I'm really excited about your, your Beagle thing. I think that's amazing. I had no idea they were being tormented like that. That's just horrible. That makes me just sick to my stomach. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, and of course, if anybody, it's at Beagle Freedom um, on any of the tweets and Beagle Freedom Project, look into it. There is on my website, I think we do have a link now. If you go to the About Us under Rosie on the page, she actually does have her own page because she's our office manager. And there's a link to it. We do have actually a fund set up. I'm hoping in total to raise $5,000 um, by the end of the year. So if you are, if you want to look into them, one of these days, I actually want to be physically involved in a rescue. 
Yeah. I know it'll be difficult, but uh, emotionally, but I really, I think it would be very, very emotionally rewarding as well. So one of these days I will get involved in, it, in an actual yeah, that's rescue. Fantastic. You got a lot going yeah. on in your life right now. Well, it's been an honor, Tanya. Thank you Thank for you. all of this, for everything that you do for the profession, for your clients. And um, for me personally, for being here and being a great supporter. And I really appreciate it. Oh, and thank you. And thank you for all that you do, because you are, are, are one of the people in the industry that keeps me motivated and keeps me going. And, and thank you for all that you do. And, and thank, thank you for you everyone who joined us today. We look forward to seeing you. Yes, thank you, session. everybody. We'll advertise it out here and let you know. And again, thank you for being here. Have a great rest of your week and take care. Bye, everybody.